Hello, everybody. Today, welcome you. I would like to welcome you to our webinar Spotlight on Poultry Nutrition 2020s and Outlook. This is a really difficult situation as we are all, um, of course, not uh, personally, so on the dig digital form, but I think this is still a very good alternative to be here and to exchange our information. My name is Gintras Grigishas. I am responsible for the team, sales team in East Europe, Asia and Near East. With me is our technical colleague, Andreas Janssen. Yes, hello. I also welcome you to our session. I'm uh, the head of poultry department at Miavit and um, responsible for all the, the needs and questions our customers have. Yeah, so in the next 25 minutes approximately, we would like to go through the main topics, challenges of the poultry nutrition, nutrition in the 2020. And of course, um, to give you um, an outlook for the, for the future, for the next decades. Um, sure, we'll touch some points like animal welfare or antibiotic reduction. And um, we hope to give you some tools or ideas how to manage and to keep uh, the performance um, of your animals the same or even to in increase them. So please join this. If you have questions, we have here chat and our colleague Andreas Hacker is um, also in, in, in chat. So uh, he will try to manage this and answer your questions. Of course, when there are deeper questions, we will be more than uh, happy if you contact us over um, Eurotier platform so that we can go in one or another topic much, much deeper. Before we start the main presentations, I would like to highlight and to explain a little bit what Miavit is uh, standing for and what are we um, doing. I'm sharing my presentation. Our senior owner established the company more than 50 years ago and hit the words minerals, amino acids and vitamins behind the name Miavit. The company is still in the hands of the family and offers solutions to reduce or prevent the antibiotics usage in the modern animal production. Miavit headquarters is still based in the north part of Germany, where the animal production has the highest density and sometimes is even called as the Silicon Valley of animal production. In the 14 modern factories, what you see here in yellow, we are able to produce powder products like premixes, feed additives, as for example, toxin binders, antioxidants or coated minerals, and other feed supplements. The biggest part of liquid products, product solutions, are supplement feed provided through the drinking lines. Of course, more specialties, more information you will find on our homepage, www.miavit.de. Our factories in Spain and Vietnam are the logical extension of our expansion to the world. We try to be closer to the customers as we are already delivering in more than 80 countries. To keep the high quality of the product and to develop the new solutions in the today fast changing world, we can offer you our team of experts from nutrition engineers, chemists, veterinarians, logistics, feed law experts, which can consider your challenges from the different perspective. Added to this, we are speaking more than 20 languages, which help us to be closer to you and to explain our ideas and solutions in your language. In the last slide, I would like to highlight that Miavit is an innovative company, spread its activities not only in animal nutrition sector, but also in pet food, biogas and food. We are also able to bring your product ideas in reality and to produce them under your name and logo. Herewith, we support you in the product development and share our expertise from many years. Hundreds of different packagings that you find the right packaging size for your needed product solutions. 
Now I would like to introduce again very short uh, our colleague Andreas Jensen. As he mentioned before, he's our head of poultry department. And uh, Andreas, you spent almost your whole life in the field, in the farms. And um, we are more than happy that you join our team several years ago and share your expertise. So please, um, the stage is yours and share your ideas and visions for the future. Okay, uh, thank you, Ginti. Um, welcome to all the participants again. And uh, we just want to share some thoughts about the challenges and development in the poultry production for the next decade and how to deal with them. So the presentation is divided into different topics. The first part shows our approach to deal with these challenge. The future trends uh, will give an outlook to the expected developments of the poultry market from the consumer's perspective and also from the producer's perspective. And uh, the challenges will be different depending on the local circumstances, but in general, quite similar. And nutritional solutions will show what possibilities we have. And our engagement with the world just shows the policy of Mirbit. How does Mirbit's approach look like? Although we focus just on nutrition, there are many factors and possibilities to look at. The first is the feed formulation in general. And uh, because there are lots of raw materials and supplements available, and the big group of feed additives can be quite confusing. So they can be technical or nutritional, like organic acid can be both. Um, special premix components can also be additive, like trace elements or special vitamins. Another group are the toxin binders. So because toxins occur everywhere in the world, there can be field toxins, storage toxins, or even endogenous toxins that can be bound by different products. So choose the most effective product adapted to your own challenges. Antioxidants are very often considered just as a commodity, but it's worth to have a closer look. There are two kinds of antioxidants, the technical and the physiological, and the technical antioxidants just preserve the feed raw materials because oxidated fats in feed, for example, can impair feed intake, feed conversion, and uh, performance. Very important is that they only can be used as a prevention. So if you have any antioxidative stress, you can use physiological antioxidants. They can reduce the impact of oxidated feed materials, for example, or reduce this antioxidant stress due to diseases. The last group in this approach are the farmline product. In our case, they are additional additives that are given on top by feed or by water, and they are used in just specific situations and only for a specific time. So they can prevent problems or even help to recover after challenges. All these different topics are combined to one compound feed. And only if all these factors are considered in the nutrition and adapted to the local conditions, we can reach our goals, which are welfare, like well-developed bone frame or low incidence of feather packing, a good intestinal health for a maximum absorption of nutrients, and in consequence, of course, a good performance in terms of production and also profitability. So what will be the future trends we are already facing or we have to face in the next years? First of all, the volume is increasing and will further increase in the next years. So for the last 20 years, the production of chicken meat has increased more than 100%. And this growth rate will go on for the next years. So for the developed countries, a little bit lower, but for developing countries, quite high growth rates. And also the egg production is constantly growing. So the demand is not only for shell eggs, 
but also more and more for egg products for food industry, especially in, in more developed markets. Eggs are quite easy to produce, are completely packed itself, don't need any further processing, have a good shelf life, and it's a quite valuable uh, protein source that can also be prepared quite easily. But only the, not only the increase of the volumes should attract our attention. In the end, everything is done for the consumers who will buy the products. So the demand of the consumers is a great driver for the future trends and changes. Another driver for the future trends are the changes on the producer side, like genetics, feed, etc. What are the main trends from the perspective of the consumers. First of all, it should be affordable, of course. Then it should be available in different cuts for direct use, for example. And of course, everybody wants to have the highest possible quality. So it depends on what this means. The quality of the product can have several aspects. With increasing awareness of people of their own nutrition, they don't want any residues of antibiotics or other substances in their food. Bacterial contamination is also a topic of increasing importance. Keywords are Salmonella or Campylobacter, for example. Together with the bacterial con contamination, resistance against antibiotics can also be transferred. And in general, people are looking for more and more for healthy products. So the keywords are low fat or high protein. One more general demand is to look for a sustainable um, and resource saving production. So one parameter for this is the carbon footprint, for example. And depending on the location and more and more pressure is put on environmental topics and animal welfare. So there are many local regulations regarding ammonia emission or use of manure. And animal welfare is an important issue for many people, and they are even willing to pay more for, for example, slow growing chicken or organic meat, for example. Some other drivers are on the producer side. So year by year, genetic strains of broilers and also layers are changing slightly, but constantly. Still performance is increasing, but also some other topics change like metabolic functions, behavior, disease resistance, and so on. So as a poultry producer, you're really never finished to adapt. And also the, the feed supply can be challenging depending on the location. So every harvest is different. Not every raw material is avail available everywhere because of pricing or shortage in, in harvest. And additionally, the raising amount of feed additives makes it quite hard to select the most beneficial for your local uh, situation. So what are the main challenges we should focus on? First of all, we should be aware of the differences between the different genetics and also the target of the of the production and the great potential the modern breeds have. If we compare the growth of the broiler and the layer pullet, for example, it's amazing how big the difference is. So the target and the potential of the animals determines the, the feeding strategy we have to adapt. So and also the management conditions and environmental uh, conditions have an impact on the feed strategy, depending on the location where you are. Although we work with the same genetic strains worldwide, the product and the focus of the production can be also very different. If we look for the preferred slaughter weight, for example, we see a big variation of 1 kg up to 3 kg. Of course, the, the strategy to optimize this production will be different. So let's have a look to the challenges on bird level. Only a healthy and well-working gut can absorb as much nutrients as needed for the conversion to valuable meat or eggs. 
the better the gut is working, the lower will be the necessary input and the lower will be all the related problems like wet litter, dysbiosis, coccidia pressure and so on. Especially in broilers, the high feed intake and the big load of nutrients desire an uh, optimal digestion. So for layers and breeders, a good gut health is also important for actual quality because of the better mineral absorption. With increasing growth rates in broilers, uh, the development of the bone frame is crucial, especially with higher end weights. And in layers, the laying periods are extended more and more due to increasing persistency in laying rate. And the challenge is to maintain a good shell quality, even in old flocks. The feed industry provides quite a, quite a lot of products to enhance mineral, mineralization, but also don't forget the base products like vitamins, trace elements, limestone and uh, phosphates. So many infectious diseases are also are linked to the respiratory tract like IB or mycoplasma, but also bacterial challenge uh, the surface of the respiratory tract. Next to feed and water, oxygen or air is the most important nutrient. So this highlights the importance of a good management. All metabolic processes rely on an adequate oxygen supply. So a good respiratory health is important as good as uh, is as important as gut health for a good performance. So the better the respiratory health, the lower the incidence of bacterial problems in most cases will be. Well known for chronic uh, undersupply of oxygen is uh, acetis, for example. So the biggest challenge to work on all these issues is to create the best overall strategy. So the main target should be to reach the optimum concept in terms of profitability and quality. So and therefore you need a holistic approach. What can we contribute to find the best solutions? So from the nutritional point of view, we have several options to improve or adapt. So in general, we have three groups. The first is the base feed, the second water, and the third group are the all the additives. The first group, the feed, includes all the general topics regarding feed formulation. So we have different feed uh, raw materials, different feed structures, protein levels, amino acids, different mineral sources and qualities, different uh, vitamin levels, depending on the raw materials, also feed enzymes and phytases are important. So, and last but not least, there are lots of functional ingredients like yeast products or fatty acids. Additional to the base feed, all the ingredients, there are a lot of feed additives. So, but only one additive, regardless to all the other factors, will never solve any problem. So only the holistic approach will show the best results. So, and because of uh, water is roughly twice as feed. So this is one of the main nutrients and um, should always be watched closely. So water should be available constantly, have an acceptable quality in terms of chemical and bio biological contaminants. Temperature can also be important. Additives for drinking water can have quite different targets. So there are additives to increase the quality or reduce bacterial growth. These are working mainly in the water itself. But the second option is also the use of water additives to supply special additives to the animals. So well known are the organic acids or different vitamins, but there are also several more complex products that have a specific target like liver vital or myarome or antioxidants and minerals are also available. So the benefit of water additives is the precise and quick supply of special nutrients to a target uh, challenge. So many topics have to be considered for a feed strategy to ensure good performance and good economic results at the same time. As an experienced premix company, Miavit has the knowledge 
and the experience to create solutions. So the central point is to evaluate the local conditions and challenges and to focus on their solutions. So their own special products as well as commercial products that can be used to find the best solutions for each, each customer. What does this mean in detail? We can provide uh, balanced and adapted premixes um, or enriched premixes completely adapted to the final feed. We can choose the most su suitable toxin binder, depending on the contamination. There are different antioxidants that preserve the feed quality. So we have feed and water ad additives that can be offered by, uh, for different targets or different challenges. And to evaluate these challenges, we have a team of nutritionists, veterinarians to find the best solutions. Also regarding feed concepts of and uh, alternative raw materials. So our engagement with the world. So as a worldwide acting company, we are quite good uh, to adapt to the local conditions and find the best strategies in these conditions. So thank you very much for your attention. And I hope I gave some thoughts to, to think about. Yeah, thank you, Andreas, for the really interesting journey, what you take, uh, take us in the last 20 minutes. I think uh, we could saw that there's no silver bullet um, for the one solution. Um, just um, before we say um, um, thanks and bye-bye, uh, I would like to mention that we as a company um we invite you to go with us deeply in some other topics um what andreas just mentioned and touched a little bit so you see here an overview about the global nutrition series about essential oils etc other uh, topics what we what we go deeply so feel free to contact us to to get the registration number and um to to join our webinars which are not all on um Eurotier platform So now, yes, so now we've finished our presentations. Thank you for all participants being with us. Thank you, you Andreas, for sharing your experience and expertise with, uh, with us. This is always, always appreciate. I learn every time something new. Um, I hope for the participants that uh, they take also something, uh, something home. I just want to mention again that um, we are available on YouTube, LinkedIn, and uh, Instagram. So feel free to follow us um, and uh, to get the newest information, the newest um, experience exchanges from, from our company. Yeah, Andreas, probably you will okay. say. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, for any questions or further discussions, please contact us on the Eurotour tier platform, we will be available. So nice to meet you there. Yeah, thanks a lot. And please stay healthy. And I hope to see you soon personally and not only over the digital solutions. Thanks a lot and bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye.